Hi all, today we are going to discuss about measurement of earth resistance of the electrode, earth electrode. So, before going to that, let us first try to understand what will be the pattern of the electric field when a current or a fault current or leakage current passes through the electrode, how the electric field distribution will be there so that we can clearly understand the procedure to measure the resistance of the earth electrode. So, let us take for example, I am connecting a battery source E. So, that battery source is connected to the earth electrode E and let us assume the second side of the battery is connected to another electrode which is placed a little bit far, a little bit far from this electrode E. So, now what happens? The current I will pass through the battery. It will come to the electrode E. Through the electrode, it will pass through the ground. From the ground, it will pass through the ground or the earth and it will return back from the electrode B to the battery. So, when the current is passing between the electrode E to B, it will not pass linearly between these things because when the current comes out of the electrode, the distribution of the electric field or distribution of the current will be like this. So, at this from this positive terminal, because this is connected to the positive terminal, this electrode is positive. From this, the electric field lines will diverge near to the electrode. That means, near to the electrode, the potential gradient will be very high. It will go on changing at a faster rate because current density will be highest here. Gradually, it will start distributing. Then after that, it will maintain nearly constant because it will maintain a straight line. Again, while reaching near to the electrode B, again, this electric field will diverge. So, similar is the case of distribution of the current. So, that current will return back from here. So, if you want to measure the resistance, what we have to measure? We have to measure the voltage where the potential is equal to constant. So, if you take the distribution of this potential distribution, the distribution of potential distribution will be like this. From the electrode, let us assume electrode is having a potential of E. So, so, from this potential, that means from this electrode, the voltage, the potential gradient will change drastically. It will reach some constant value. So, after some distance, it will reach the constant value. Then it is maintained constant. Again, near to the select electrode, second electrode, it will drastically change. Again, near to the second electrode, it will drastically change. This will be the distribution of the voltage. So, practically speaking, we can just draw it in the inverse. So, to, actually, that will be the correct one because here the potential is positive. So, potential will gradually decrease, then it will remain constant and again when it reaches to this electrode, it will vary like this. Or we can tell that this is the voltage between VE and in the center point, somewhere in the center point, I am taking that point as A. That means potential between electrode E to A, if you take, it is varying it drastically. By the time it reaches this point A, up to this point, it remains nearly constant. Again, what happens? By the time you reach to the electrode B, again, it reaches to the negative value or the total potential change will be equal to E. Total potential change will be equal to E. Out of this, this value, we can tell it as this is VAB. That means voltage of A with respect to B. So, this way the potential variation will be there. Or otherwise, if you calculate the resistance, how the resistance will vary, earth resistance with respect to distance between the electrodes. So, the resistance will vary like this, then it remain constant, then again it will vary like this. Or otherwise, if you want to measure the resistance, that resistance will be equal to voltage divided by current using that we can measure it. So, this voltage is nothing but this value of VEA. Voltage is nothing but value of VEA divided by the current passing through the electrode. So, now proceeding further. So, from this we can conclude that the electric field diverges at electrode E and converges at electrode B. We have seen the same thing and constant along the middle section. Therefore, the electrode A is fixed at a location where the field is uniform. But practically locating the exact location of the field is very difficult. So, practically what we will do, we will place the electrode A between the electrode E and B. So, we will measure the value of the voltage as well as the current. So, now shift this electrode by some distance in the left hand side. Again, measure the value of voltage and current. Again, shift by some distance, measure the voltage and current. So, in all the three readings, whatever voltage is coming, it should vary little bit only. It will, it should be very nearly constant. If when you are shifting the electrode, the value is changing, the meaning of that one is the distance between the two electrodes. That means between the electrode E and B is not sufficiently long. That means you are not getting this constant curve. So, now what you have to do? You have to increase the distance between E and B. I am repeating once again. You measure the value in the center. 
then you shift it little bit and measure shift it little bit this side and measure in all the three cases whatever the voltmeter reading is showing that should show nearly same value only little bit variation is allowed but more variation should not be there so if more variation is there that means the distance between the electrodes e and b is not sufficient to get this constant slope characteristic or constant characteristic. So now what we have to do, we have to increase the gap between the electrodes E and B and then make the setup again and measure it. So this thing we have to do. But the disadvantage of giving the DC is, if you are giving the DC, the DC will lead to the effect of electrolytic action of the soil and that leads to production of some EMF, that EMF will interfere with the main voltage what you are applying, that creates the problem in the measurement. Or simply briefly speaking, if you are giving the DC, it may lead to the electrolytic action and thus give the wrong result. In order to avoid that, we don't give DC practically, we always give the AC. So there are basically two methods for measurement of earth resistance. First one is the potential fall method. In this method, the AC is given to this the test electrodes through a transformer. So there is a transformer, the voltage is stepped down. So now one rheostat is used for varying the value such that we can get the required value. So now this is connected to electrode E and the there is second electrode will be A. So this whatever the transformer secondary is there, it is connected between the electrode E and electrode A. So in between these two electrodes, the electrode B is connected. So voltmeter will be connected between electrode E and electrode B. So again, now I have already explained before. Now take on reading. Now shift the this particular electrode by some distance in this side. Generally, it is shifted by 5 meters. Similarly, it is shifted this side also by 5 meters. Take the readings. So the difference in these readings should be very minimum because always some variation will be there, but variation should be minimum. So if the variation is minimum, that whatever test you are performing is proper. If variation is not minimum, then you have to increase the gap between the electrode E and electrode A. Because E is already the earth electrode, we cannot displace it. We will displace this auxiliary electrode which is placed for measurement purpose. We will shift by a little bit and then again perform the same procedure. So now the value of the earthing resistance will be equal to the average value of the voltage measured in all the three readings divided by the current or we can tell that the voltage measured in each of the three readings you take the sum similarly current all the three readings you take the sum divide them so you will get the value of earthing resistance because generally the variation is very less so you can directly take the value of the voltage divided by current we can get using this one getting it so now coming to the second procedure second procedure is earth tester because in previous procedure supply is required wherever you want to test the condition of the earth electrode sometimes the ac may not be available so in that case we go for the earth tester so earth tester it is basically a special type of the magger which is discussed in our previous lectures so having a permanent magnet dc generator which will be the handheld generator by rotating this crankshaft we can generate the required value of the voltage so this will be designed in such a way if you rotate it more than the required speed so automatically inside some arrangement will be provided there centrifugal switch by which irrespective of what speed you are rotating outside inside the rotor will rotate at a constant speed and the, so that the voltage produced will be constant at your terminals so now dc is produced by this generator but we know for the electrodes we have to apply ac so what we have to do whatever dc is produced we have to convert to ac so for that one inverter will be used so because this is nothing but the inverter so this inverter is used to convert whatever the DC is produced to the AC so that we can supply it. So same thing I have mentioned here, rotating because this inverter is also called as a rotating current reverser. So it is a rotary type current reverser because based on the rotation it will convert. Alternately it will supply that whatever DC is there for some time one positive polarity will be connected to one electrode, sometime negative polarity will be connected. So that means every revolution, two times the polarity will change. Accordingly, that DC will be converted to AC. So that AC will be applied to the electrodes. So you can see here, whatever the AC that is produced from this end, so AC one is connected to this side and the second terminal is connected here. Okay, one terminal is connected here and the second terminal is connected here. AC is applied to these electrodes. So from here, you can see this is connected to C because this is called as current electrode because we are measuring the current and similarly here it is connected to current electrode beginning one which is connected to E. So now in order to measure the voltage, so voltage will be measured between the terminal E and the P. So for that we are using two more terminals, one lead is P1, another lead is P2. So these two leads are connected 
to measure the voltage so now for measurement of the resistance what we do we use the ratio type ohm meter what is ratio type ohm meter we have already discussed in the megger topic you can please refer there that ratio type ohm meter what it will do it will take the ratio of the current passing through the potential coil and the current coil and accordingly it show the deflection that means torque is proportional to ratio of the currents passing through these things so accordingly it will display so if you are put, keeping it in such a way that the torque the positive torque will be due to potential coil and negative torque is due to the current coil so in that case the ratio will be potential by current so automatically it will indicate the value of the resistance directly but this ratio type potentiometer sorry ratio type ohm meter basically need the dc but here whatever is coming from the electrodes is ac so again it will be converted to dc again it will be converted to dc so now coming to the potential coil potential coil we have to apply the voltage voltage means whatever is between the p1 and this p2 so that should be given to this you can see here p1 is connected to this one and p2 is connected to this one this is a rotary type rectifier which will convert this ac into dc so dc will be given to potential coil so now coming to the current coil current coil will measure the current supplied from this dc source so that's why you can see here the dc source whatever dc is there the dc is directly connected so you can see here this is one terminal so this is the second one so this is the second one the dc is supplied which is passing through the terminals c1 and c2 whatever current is passing between c1 and c2 so that is rectified to dc and that dc is given here that is rectified to dc and that corresponding dc is given to this one so please remember this one so in this way it will basically work so i hope the functioning of the measurement of the earth resistance is completely clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much